How did they do that? Hello and welcome to the very first episode of the How Did They Do That series. On this first episode we are going to take a look on how we created this intro. So what we are going to create today is basically this nice text animation together with those small colored figures. We have to key some footage, we have to colorize it and then we take a quick look on how we did those nice black outlines so that the characters look more like cartoons. So let's get started. I have already created a new composition. The composition settings are 1280 by 720 square pixels, 15 frames a second, because I'm just capturing the screen with 15 frames per second and a duration of 15 seconds. Let's just call this one the main comp and hit OK. I already created the text for us so that everything goes a bit faster. So let's at first create a nice background layer. So we choose layer, new, solid, we make it comp size and the color doesn't really matter. Let's just make it white for now and click OK. So we bring it below the text and then we choose the ramp effect from the effects menu, generate ramp or we just type it in here so that you can see it. On the effects and presets we just type in ramp and there we should have it and just drag it onto our background. Let's just name this solid BG for background and by default it just creates this black to white ramp so let's make this look a bit nicer. We just click on the black and choose some nice blue color something like this and a quick tip if we now choose for the white the same color like the start color the same blue and if we now click on the blue we are in the same color scheme and we can just pick a lighter one but the mood will stay the same so it looks just a bit nicer like so let's maybe Make this one also a bit lighter. Okay, looking nice. So let's bring in some footage. I have already created some folders here for the solids and for the videos. So I just bring in the first footage which I was filming. I just drag it onto this small new composition icon. Okay, let's quickly scrub through this. It's just me pulling up a stick as a reference for the words which we are going to bring in. As I knew in the beginning which kind of steps I had to walk through in the post-production, I had prepared a few things. For example, I wear all black just to have a nicer contrast to the green screen. So you see, I also put on those black shoes and I put my shirt into my trousers to make it easier in the post-production and I put on those two black bracelets to have some tracking points for the tracking later on. Okay, so let's start. Just bring in a keyer and the best one for this will be keying key light and I just pick the screen color and I take a green which is very next to my body because this is the color we want to get rid of the most. And if I just click, we already have a nice result. We switch this here to the screen mat and we see that we have to work here a bit. The white isn't really white and the black isn't really black. So let's quickly go to the screen mat and clip the black. So just like so, maybe about 50. And just bring in the white, so clip the white, maybe also about 50, 52 will be nice. Okay. And we can also shrink the mat just a little bit, maybe just one pixel, so that we don't have those hard edges everywhere. So then we go back to our final result and we just quickly bring out a garbage mask, so I just take the wrecked 
Angular mask tool. And let me take a look if everything's in there. It needs to be a bit bigger. Okay. And I'm walking off the screen. Okay, looking nice. And as I know already that I want to be on the left side here, this guy here. So I just mirror this one. So let's go to transform and I just type in negative 100 and I'm walking off to the other side. So let's get this colored. So for this one, I just take a fill effect, just type in fill and by default it should look red and it does look red. Okay, but we still have those freaky edges everywhere around here. So let's just make this matte look a bit nicer. For that we take a joker, so let's type in joker and we take the matte joker, just bring it out here and it already looks very nice. So now let's take a look on how we did those black lines around our body. And for this one I'm taking a effect which you may not have thought about, but it works quite well as I have figured out. And we just take the glow effect. There we have it and just bring it onto the footage. And by default it does what it's supposed to do. It creates this nice glow around the body, but we don't want that. So at first let's make the glow not based on the colors, but on the alpha. There we have it. And then let's just change the colors to black. So now we can make the glow intensity a bit stronger, maybe about eight. Yes, that's looking nice. But we have one problem, let's make it six, because it's still glowing. So it's going from black to transparent and we don't want that. What we can do here is duplicate the matte choker by hitting control D and this just duplicates the choker and we just put it below the glow. And there we have it. Glow, no glow. Okay. And we can just bring in this one into our main comp. So I'm back at the main comp. And there I have my green screen. I just dragged it onto the main comp. And I'm taking a quick look where everything is in position. And this is my final move. And so I just bring it out here to point where it looks nice. But the sad thing is that the words don't immediately stick to the hands, so we have to track the hands that we can later on parent this tracking data to the words. Let's do this. So I take the same footage as before and drag it into a new composition. Let's call this one the tracking comp. And we create a new layer, a null object on which we apply our tracking data. So let's call this one tracking data. Okay, and now we have to bring out our tracker. And if you don't have it here, you can go under window tracker. And there we have it. Now we click on track motion. We want to track the position and also the rotation. And we want the target to be our tracking data null object. Okay. So let's quickly scrub through a point because I want to track this footage backwards because I don't need any tracking data after this point in time. So I'm going to the point in time where I'm letting the stick go. And now I'm selecting those two points. Okay, this is looking all right. And I guess 
should work the way we want it. And I'm just clicking the Analyze Backwards button. Okay, there we go. Okay, so I just want the track until here. So I'm just going into my green screen to the trackers and let's just delete all the points before that point in time. Okay, same thing here. Okay, and now we can apply our tracker by simply clicking apply. X and Y is okay. And now we have this null object which sticks to my hand. So let's just copy this one, the tracking data, copy and we don't need the tracking comp so we can close it. We also don't need the green screen so we can close this also. And we are back in our main comp. And now let's bring in the tracking data by clicking Control and V for paste. What we do now is just make those words which we want to animate 3D layers. So in this animation we are just looking for the did day. So I'm just making this one a 3D layer. And I take the pen behind tool and just select it and bring it up to a point where the hands have contact to the letters because then the words just scale and rotate around this point. Okay, let's just quickly take a look until when the tracking data is applied. Goes until here. So I just position the character a bit nicer. Like so. And now we just keyframe the did day in this point of time. So the position and the orientation and rotation. And now we connect our words to the null object. And we do it by using the pick whip. Let's just bring the tracking data directly to the did day and we don't have to see it. So we just take this pick whip here, bring it onto the tracking data and we're finished. If we go to the timeline now, you can see it sticks to the hand. Of course, we do have to do a few small changes. That's why we made those keyframes. So let's just go to the beginning where the word shall appear. It's about here. And we just create some new keyframes and rotate the letters until it's flat and now we just take a look when the words should be frontal and this is around here so we just bring it back to zero and now we have our words. What we can do now is just take a look that maybe this D always is connected to the hand so we just always go through a few frames until here and then we can just position it a bit nicer. Okay, I have set a few keyframes. Maybe I could have set less keyframes, but I just went through the last 10 or 15 keyframes. And now I have all those nice rotation and position details because of the tracking and also the keyframes I set to stick the D directly to the hand. And it will look even nicer if we just put on the motion blur for the did they layer just here and for the whole composition. And let's just make a quick ramp preview, just those four seconds here. Yeah. This is looking 
Nice. So now for the final touch, I just make a vignette around the whole composition. So, and I guess there are several ways to create a nice looking vignette. Uh, this is my way of doing it. I'm just creating a new solid, make it black and also comp size. And then I take the pen tool, just create a nice looking vignette. I'm just doing this not with the ellipse tool because I guess it just looks a bit more organic. Then I go into this black solid to the masks, just invert it, feather the mask. Okay, maybe a bit more or I just bring in the expansion. And then I just change the opacity, maybe just about 20. For now, I just have a few small tips for you, how you can speed up your work while doing the rest of this. As you may know, I had three characters to animate. So how can we benefit from the work we have already done? Mm, that's easy. Just put the next footage into the new composition. And there we have it. And now I just go to the footage we already had created which is here. Let me just open it and then we just open the effects and just copy all of them. Edit, copy and then we go into the new composition, click on the footage, edit, paste and there we have it. It is red. So I just have to mask everything out and I could bring it into my main comp. And I just had to change the color here. So another quick tip is just something I, I was trying out at the beginning because I didn't know which kind of look I was after so I was trying to create something in a more black and white style. So let me just switch off the effects on the background. So we just have this white background again. And now we could either just go into the green screen footage and just go to the effects under fill, make it white. If, if this is what we are after, this is looking nice, a nice black and white outline style. And what I also did is, let's just go back, I just put a other effect, once again the key light effect and just keyed out the red. That's it. So you have transparent characters where you can see everything is shining through. You could also play a bit with the different blending modes to maybe reveal the background or something like that or maybe just reveal the background with the outlines. But for that I guess you don't need me anymore. So thanks for sharing 20 minutes of your time with me and we see and hear us next time.